Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck of the woods? <laughs> what up? What up? Manners and respect, man. I your girl, Debbie from Donga Yard. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more. It is the Jamaican cooking journey. If you're new right on over here, there's always a special welcome waiting for you. Thank you so very much. Those of you who were there with me from the beginning and you are still here, you know as always, manners and respect. Now today's video, we are still on preparing a meal. Jamaican meal. Yeah. Today's meal that we are, well, I'm going to be taking you along on how to prepare is um, Kalalo liver, Kalalo and green bananas. Jamaican liver and Kalalo and cooked green bananas. That's a really special meal for anybody that is not of Jamaican to, would like to prepare. You know, if you're a Jamaican and you migrate, you go away, you have your wife, your husband, you always remember that meal. So let's proceed. We are going to be, let me show you what is happening over here. I have prepped ahead of time all my little seasonings that I'll be using to steam my kalalu. Mm -hmm. It's there in the pot. I've got my kalalu right on over here, all cleaned, washed, and chopped fine. Don't worry about how you do that. We will leave for you in the description of this video the link to how to prepare the Jamaican kalalu. That video is there. It is so under watch, but it is there showing you from start to finish, right in depth, how you prepare this kalalu. You could also substitute some greens of your choice and are in the country that you live. But this kalalu has a peculiar taste to it with the liver. Now we are going to be preparing some liver. There is there, there are two videos there. I think one, I don't remember, but one shows you how to strip your liver. All of that. So all of that is done here already. What I want you to pay attention to in this video is how to tenderize your liver so you can have a shorter cooking period. And two, some of the livers are so, so chewy. No matter how you try to do it, it just comes out chewy. I am sharing with you this method of tenderizing your liver before you start cooking it in order for you to get this mild, nice tasting liver. You want to have your liver, and as I, I did mention that in the prior liver video, broad and thin. So it has been cooked, it, sorry, wow, it has been cleaned and it has been washed. I've stripped it, you know, clean it means and I've washed it. Now you want to have, most people have this in their kitchen. We call it a meat mallet. And there are some here, them light like a car. Don't buy the ones that are light. You're not going to get any good work from them or any good job. You want one with a little weight. So what you're going to do, you're going to use this part here. Daddy, honey, it. This part here, this part here. Some people will have the kind of, um, that nerve thing there. I don't remember what it is. You might just want to click off a little because it's going to, so you want to just gently from side to side. And you will see when you do that, how that, that's this small piece of liver. You see how broad it has become. You want to do this. Even though you cut it thin sometimes, even though you cut some of them so thin. I saw, oh, this is beef liver, by the way. I saw all call them. You would know. Who knows? We never did it. When we just buy it. So you want to tenderize it because these have some little slight spikes. So you want to use it from side to side. And you notice each piece has become broader. And I did say in the video, this is my previous liver video, you need to have your liver pieces broad and thin. This is how it has become. So I have two pounds here and I'm going to go do this. I have showed you. Use your mallet and you beat your liver tender. Rise it like this. You know, half a dozen, you know, just a little because, you know, and you get it like this. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and tenderize all of mine. Come back and show you. Oh, I'll be seasoning my liver. Masuko. I am back and I've tenderized all or most because some of mine were so thin. 
I did not remember if I showed you my green bananas. Yes. And I only showed you my color of pot. I have a pot here for my green bananas. And I also have added my salt already. This, I would encourage if you are young in the kitchen or if, when I say young, I don't mean in age. To cooking, you're new to cooking. Try as soon as you're cooking like food or anything. You, you know, make sure as you catch the water or you put on the water, you put the salt. Young cooks tend to forget salt. This is my skillet that I'll be using. And at this point, I can get my flame up and get my skillet being preheated. I'm going to be using a reasonable amount of oil. So maybe some oil police might be here to drag me. But that's how liver goes. You need a reasonable amount of oil in your liver. So I'm going to be heating up my skillet on that. Now I've got here my liver. I'll be seasoning my liver with some granulated garlic. Yes, I have this for the longest while. And I use it a little sometimes. I'm going to be using some dried basil. I'm going to be putting in a little black pepper. I'm going to be grating some red or yellow onions, a piece of green thyme. Yes, I'm going to be putting it in. I'm using about five cloves of garlic. It's two pounds of liver. I'm using a little ginger. I'm going to be using a mighty lot of green scallions and also a little salt. Now what I'm doing, I'll be going off camera to season my liver. I've showed you what I'll be using. Use your seasoning of choice, okay? You might want to use all purpose. This is the time for your all purpose and your meat seasoning. I'm using my herbs. I'm going to go get my herbs right in and I'm going to return. Whilst my skillet is being preheated, I'm going to soon come. Hmm? Okay, I'm back and I've just used like about a third of my ginger. I have my grated um, red onions. I have my scallions. I have some scotch bonnet. Which should be should be the ripe one, but this is green. And I you saw me put in my thyme, I thought. I have here some freshly grounded pimento seed and it has become powder. That does give liver a beautiful flavor family. I am gonna put in now be putting in now a little black pepper. Not a lot because we have some spice there already. The pepper and the pimento seed, those are really spicy. Wanna put in my basil. I'm doing this because I don't use um like the artificial seasoning of such so I'm doing this and as I said before you want to use your seasonings right here I'm putting me in some garlic I like a lot of garlic in my liver and I'll be putting in a mighty lot inside my kalaloo as well my kalaloo the little herbs are seasoning for my kalaloo over here and this is a ride and whistle it's a multitasking video as when you're preparing a meal you multitask or multitask you people say multi in our Caribbean, we say multi. So, we are carrying this down to a little steaming before we put our kalalo in. This is showing you how you go about preparing this meal. I told you that we are moving in to prepare a meal. Not every video, but sometimes as opposed to just one little dish. Eh? Now, let's get back to this. This is here being preheated. I told you it must be hot. So, it is here. We can at this point get our flame on. For our water for our banana but put it too low we want it to come to a boil and I had it all of that now I think I did not add salt I hope I did that many that salt I'm not sure you're not sure with that mm -hmm. right I put a little sure. and we want to start rubbing up this thing get your heat up liver must be cooked on high heat and this can't take long because we tenderize it we don't use a lot of water in liver you might use us maybe like two or three tablespoons so you get your hot water get going don't put no cold water in it so we are rubbing this thing here right here and now and I like that we also gonna be putting a little soy sauce okay if you want to put brown in put brown in gonna put brown in nothing but black cake and you know that too put a little to suit you not too much because we're not going in the pot much with this thing here, you know and at this point, I'm putting a little oyster sauce. Why are you putting it, Debbie? Just for a little flavoring, a little niceness, a little jelliness. Yeah. All right. So look at me here. I'm rubbing in. This is how I'm doing mine. You do you. Okay, remember I told you. Be you, do you. Love you. And this smells. Daddy, smell it? Yeah, it smells so good. 
make sure your heat is really high on the ice that you can have on your stove because we now go in at this thing yeah, too too long hmm? rubbing in with my special spoon and all of that and i think this pot should be almost ready and i'm going right in with my liver and that is what you want to hear when you get your liver in your skillet in your pot make sure you're gonna have it all use something that is wide and all of that now we're gonna use our hot water to rinse this when we are ready not at this point so high heat the ice heat on your stove and that is what is gonna be happening you are not ready to cover it yet you're gonna let it stay there and start this little cooking until you see when you turn it around you see it starts getting a little lighter like a little let me show you your liver starts cooking right there no covering as yet you want to come right on over here dad position yourself multitasking preparing this liver color and green bananas meal yes look at what is happening yes we are preparing some jello some juice to steam down our kalalo in also we're going to be getting our flame down a little bit kalalo over here has been prepared and cleaned the video on how you are to do it is right up on the channel we leave the link put it in our kalalo right now every single bit nice and all of that no salt right now no salt for now we are going to get our flame down very low and we are steaming it no water right down into that niceness that we prepared right there and we are going to get it really on the low on your stove right on over here let's ride and whistle our water is coming to a boil for our green bananas and all of that look at me here very high and you're going to be swirling this around swirling this around on the ice heat i'm going to be doing that and when i return i think i'll be peeling my bananas and also i'll be going in the direction to get my liver I'll finish up and grave it down. No cover on this liver right now. Must soon come. Okay, we are right back. And this is what is happening with our liver. I want that more. You shoot them up. Every single piece of this liver is cooked. Look at me. This is a wooden spoon and it's cutting the liver. You see me? It's cutting the liver. Now, you don't want to stay right here now with this liver and play around with it until it gets coming back chewy. It will come back chewy even though you have tenderized it. Overcooking makes the liver become chewy. At this point, get your flame down a bit. At this very point, I want to, if you have some chopped tomatoes, or if you want to use chopped tomatoes, if you want to use some tomato peels, stewed tomato, whatever, at this point, I'm going to be putting in some ketchup, okay? So you put to your liking, I have two pound, get my flame back up, and I like that. So I'm going to be putting in some ketchup because I want some juicy chicken liver gravy, and I like that. When you do that, you make sure you distribute this gravy right through this liver. Okay? Yeah. I always had vinegar to my liver. I always do. So... I'm putting this time I'm trying some malt vinegar I don't know what it will give me but I normally use like white distill or even apple cider I use ketchup the ketchup has a little sweetness and when that vinegar and that ketchup combines and this malt vinegar smells beautiful so I'm gonna be putting in about that should give me about a teaspoon I don't want to put a lot so look at me here now you're gonna get it right through still on the high and you see the liver gravy, you see the, the gravy and the liver, you see the, it a belly to one gravy, right on, right there, right in. Now, get your flame down a bit, because I want you to see that this liver is properly cooked. Liver not take a long time, and if you stay in this pot too long, as I told you, let us cut a piece of our liver. See there? It's properly cooked. So, right in, right now. I eat all the way. Now, we should have tasted for salt perfection, but we can always do that at the end because these are the things that we are using. They do have some salt in them. What I want to do now, I want to get my flame right back up to the very ice. I'm going to use a little hot water here, maybe about two of this. Yeah, not a lot, because you know, say, liver water, no friend, you know. 
But this liver thing here is not a lot of people can get it, you know. So you want to rinse out the little nice seasoning and stuff. And you know, you know, you are, if you are on the Jamaican cooking journey, that you are supposed to go right to the side with this. And the very highest heat that you can find, you put it right in there now. And this is it. This is it. Flame right off. This liver is ready. This liver is ready. You see the gravy and all of them sitting there in a heat? This liver is ready. It's ready for you. I've got here a whole crocus bag of, um, bag of onion rings. This is for me. I like my liver with lots and lots and lots of crunchy onion rings. Put in a little bell pepper for keep company. You could use red and yellow. It would be beautiful, but we never have done right in. And I'm going to be distributing it right on over here. Rings them out. And I'm going to be right now. I'm just going to be covering down this spot. That steam from that liver on the burner there that is still hot, it will cook the onion rings through just a little to let them be crunchy. So that is what is going to be happening. If you want to cook yours and let them cook out, go right ahead. I don't like mine all cooked out. We're on the steaming right here and we have our flame down. So low. Now this is our color. So you want to come from the bottom. You see that is you see it's changing color so you got to turn it over you come and you want to turn it over look at it look at it down there it has built a little you have its own thing so you know I have no water down in there boil it down you see remember we didn't put any salt we still not put no salt eh? so get your little thing distributed look at me here that shoot them up let them see how they are to prepare this meal okay so it is halfway through when you know it's steam you don't want it steam till it get in too dark once the stalks are ste are cooked the leaves will be cooked the stalk is the more chewy get our flame down a little bit back yes yeah, still we're not putting a salt yet but we are going to be covering it that is happening that can go wrong you turn it down water coming to a boil we go like that we're going to go now peel up with green bananas look at me here this is happening right there there's still steam in there when we return our bananas will be in the pot boiling and all of that must soon come okay we are back and our color low is here mm -hmm. so our bananas are coming to a boil right there mm -hmm. look at your color low it still have a little juice in there yeah you know what when it's steam it have a whole heap of long water running also you don't want it to be too dry right so at this point we can put our little salt put your salt to taste but family me always, you know, I saw the color, you know, me not have a hand. I don't know why that is part of my weakness in the kitchen. I always make this color look taste a little salty. Look at me here. This is your color. Look. I want to show you something. I feel your color. Look. look at me here. It's almost there. It's mashed. So another two to three minutes on that low heat. Remember, you know, steamed color. Look. So you know, put no water in it. When we return, this color look should be ready. You don't want it all drying out. And all of that. Look at me here. Rigorous boiling of bananas. Mm -hmm. Look at me here. I came once and I still look at my onions pre cooked and my sweet pepper. And can I tell you, Dad, you know, smell the aroma will come out of the pot yeah, with the sweet um, pepper. Um, everything, everything. Yes, when we return, this meal will be plated just for you. Must soon come. I am back and our meal is ready. Bananas have been cooked. I'm going to put in my slatted spoon for sure where I'm going to use it for take it up. Our, I've moved my color of pot. So you know you must remove these times. Don't serve it with the time. That's never normally so um, presentable and all of that. So you can go all ahead. Use your tongue or whatever. Our, our, um, our liver is over here and all of that. We've got some time in it too. You do remove your time. So I'm going to plate you up some now while you watch. Okay? And if your liver gets too, you can probably reheat your liver on a little low heat. So you want to take up your liver, take up to how you like it, okay? Nice, pretty, properly cooked pieces of liver. Get in some extra onion rings for who you are serving it. Depending on how much onion them like. If them like a lot of onion like me, and I like that. Put a serving of kalalo to the side. This is okay. 
And if they got long, nothing wrong, you know, give them some more and nothing. Use your slotted spoon to remove your bananas. We cooked it with a little floxy lime because, <laughs> you know, I always, I'm always hilarious family. You have that nice little liver thing. Mm -hmm. Slotted spoon because you don't want water from the bananas escaping into this. And all of that. Pretty clean bananas. No banana with black light. Just you don't have gate. We don't really deal with that around here. And all of that. When you do that, you keep it for yourself. You don't serve it to people, okay? Okay? So we can take three bananas with this. Okay? So this is the perfect meal. Let's come right here and turn it. Don't do as I do to put your hand there to get your hand all burned. No, but I do like when me do me all and back in other cooking. Don't do like I do. Let me get my plate all pushed and set up for you. And all of that. Remember, presentation is everything. So you want to just clean around. This can be had. We have it this mostly for breakfast in Jamaica. But it can be had for dinner. It can be had for lunch. It can be had for brunch. From my kitchen to yours. From my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach. It is this Jamaican um, liver, kalalu, and green bananas meal. Please do enjoy. Now, if you have liked this video, if in this video you have learned anything that you have never known before and how to prepare this meal, remember, just I ask of you, just give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, please and thank you. When you do subscribe, hit that bell. When you hit the bell, I think there are three options now. Press option all in order for you to get all my videos that are uploaded. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Now, we have got a new channel. The name of that new channel is the Jamaican Cooking Journey Family. The link will be in the description. You see how we can throw down Pan West India and the Light Jamaican Cooking Journey. We're going to show you how as a family we can throw down in the kitchen, out of the kitchen, and all of that also with a little humor. Um, please go subscribe to our channel. The link will be in the description. As I said before, the Jamaican Deb Deb strain is quite up and running. Make sure you're subscribed. When you do subscribe, please hit all for all of my videos on my channels. Thanks for your love. Thank you for your support. I can't emphasize enough thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All the information on how to get on to us will be in the description of this and all our videos. Thanks for the love once more. It's a new here. Remember to be you, do you, and most of all, love you. Happy cooking, happy nyamin. Bless.